you can hear fun <laughs> and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all we acknowledge that we are worshipping on land that has been cared for since time immemorial by our Aboriginal brothers and sisters the Jagger and the Turrbal peoples were the peoples in this area and so we pay our respects to their elders past and present and emerging and we promise that we will continue to work with them in covenant partnership towards reconciliation our call to worship this morning is responsive, and you'll see the responses in white on the screen. Well, before we do, actually, we just welcome also the family and friends of, of Ellie Sordi, who's coming to be baptised today. So welcome to the service today. So we give thanks to God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Give praise to the one who comes in God's name. We wave our palms and we praise in celebration. This is the day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, we celebrate the coming of your Messiah with glad songs and hosannas. When we wave our palms and cheer and we celebrate the life and the love and the grace that this day symbolizes, even while dark clouds gather on the horizon. 
As we hear this familiar story once, told once again, open our hearts to receive these words anew that they may shape our lives and our faith. Amen. And while we're still standing, let us share the peace that God brings us. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. So let's come, before our, our, let's, let's come before God with our prayers of confession. Let us pray. Oh God, on this day, on, on this Palm Sunday, we remember how quickly we change, how fickle we are, how we pledge our devotion one moment and, and turn our backs the next. We go from shouting, Hosanna, save us, to crucify him. We declare that we love our neighbours and then we turn our backs on those who are homeless and hungry in our communities. We speak up for change and justice in one breath and then continue unjust practices in our daily lives by what we consume and the needs that we ignore. And so forgive us, O oh God, when we are half-hearted believers. Forgive us, O oh God, for when we are partial in our working for justice. Forgive us, O oh God, when we, when we tire easily and we forget and we grow weary. And so, Lord God, forgive us, restore us and renew us for the journey of faith so that we might become whole people who live wholly into your vision of a new life. In the name of Christ, who lived in the fullness of humanity in, in whom we follow. Amen. God promises that nothing in heaven or on earth can separate us from God's love. We know, that, we know then that when we confess the things that we have done wrong, that God will forgive us. And so be assured that through God's Son, Jesus, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now one of the great joys as, as a minister I get to do is to, is to lead in baptism. And today we invite Ellie who is coming for baptism today. And if Ellie's, a, Ellie's a godparent, but also a brother. And Brody and if you, Carly and Matthew, if you'd like to come forward too, that would be lovely. Yes, if you come and stand here. If you guys gather around this side. And then if you'd like to... Thank you. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you, Leanne. Friends... The Church Council of Centenary Uniting Church has received the request from Ellie Ann Sordi to be baptised. This important decision has been prayerfully considered and I'm glad to welcome her here today. And so Ellie, what do you ask of God's church? I ask to be baptised into the faith and family of Jesus Christ. Ellie has requested to be baptised that she may be grafted it, that you may be grafted into Christ as a member of his body, the church, to grow up in the faith of Jesus Christ and to become his faithful witness and servant. Ellie, may the Lord open your ears to hear his word and your mouth to proclaim his praise. So hear the good news and hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. 
and remember that I am with you always to the end of the age. Baptism is Christ's gift. It is a sign by which the Spirit of God joins people to Jesus Christ and incorporates them into his body, the church. In his own baptism in the Jordan by John, Jesus identified himself with humanity in its brokenness and sin. We believe that baptism was completed in his death and resurrection. By God's grace, baptism plunges us into the faith of Jesus Christ so that whatever is his may be called ours. By water and the Spirit, we are claimed as God's own and set free from the power of sin and death. Thus claimed by God, we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit that we may live as witnesses to Jesus Christ, share his ministry in the world and grow to maturity, awaiting with hope the day of the Lord Jesus. In baptism, we are called out of darkness and into God's marvellous light. And so, Ellie, in response to the gospel, I ask you, do you repent of your sins? Do you turn to Jesus Christ who has defeated the power of sin and death and brought us new life? I turn to Christ. Do you commit yourself to God trusting in Jesus Christ as Saviour and in the Holy Spirit as God's power and presence along the way? I commit myself to God. In unity with the whole church, let us stand and affirm the faith into which we were baptised. Do you believe in God? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again and he ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, we thank you for... Oh, please be seated, everyone. Sorry, I should have a seat. Faithful God, we thank you for the gifts of water and the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters and brought, and brought life out of the chaos of nothingness. In the days of Noah, you rescued those on the ark from the great flood. You saved the infant Moses from the waters of the Nile so that he could lead your people to a promised land. Your son Jesus was baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan River and anointed by the Spirit. By the baptism of his death, Christ sets us free from captivity to sin and enables us to share in his resurrection life. By the power of the Holy Spirit, bless this water and bless Ellie who will be baptized in it, that she may be born anew, to live in your light all her days and come to share at your likeness in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit want God now and forever. Amen. So, if you'd like to lean over here. Ellie and Sorley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. From this day forward, the sign of the cross is upon you. Ellie is now received into the one holy Catholic and apostolic church according to Christ's command. And I think we can celebrate that. That's... <laughs> and so now I invite you all to stand as we sing a special blessing for Ellie, as we sing the, the ironic blessing.
Thanks, everyone. Please be seated. And so Kylie and Matthew and, and Godparent Brody, I ask you now to respond to God's graciousness to Ellie by making these solemn promises. Will you encourage Ellie to grow within the Christian community, guiding her through participation in the worship, nurture and fellowship of the church so that she, came, she may come to a mature Christian faith? And friends in Christ, will you promise to maintain a life of worship and teaching, witness and service, so that Ellie and all among us may grow to maturity in Christ. With God's help, we will live out our baptism as a loving community of Christ, nurturing one another in faith, upholding one another in prayer, and encouraging one another in service until Christ comes. Sisters and brothers, always remember that you are baptised and be thankful. Ellie, you belong to Christ, the life of the world. I also have a Bible here for you, Ellie, and also a certificate of baptism for you to keep and, and hold. Ellie, may you always walk as a child of the light. Let your light shine so that it's before the whole world so that all may see your good works and give glory to God our Father. Thank you, everyone. And we're going to sing a song that we usually sing at, at baptisms. Father welcomes all his children. So feel, please let's stand and sing. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Father. Would you like to lead us in our Bible reading? Our Gospel reading today comes from Matthew's Gospel, reading from chapter 21 and reading verses 1 to 11. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. 
When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and, sat, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. I love watching a fireworks display. And whenever I hear the familiar crackle or pop or boom of fireworks echoing across the suburbs, I'm drawn to it, so I will always try and find a way to see them by whatever means that I can, usually by looking out of an upstairs window or walking up a hill to try and get a better vantage point. Sometimes all I'll see is the very tops of fireworks or explosions climbing above the tallest trees in the neighbourhood, and at other times I won't see anything at all. Of course, if there's an opportunity to watch a major fireworks display like, say, River Fire on, or on New Year's Eve, well, that's awesome. There's something within me that is drawn to watch the exquisitely crafted explosions of colour and light that fill up the night sky. And I know I'm not alone in wanting to see fireworks displays, but when I venture out onto the street to see if I can see a display that I've heard from inside my home, I'll usually find other people who've made their way outside as well to watch these fireworks. And of course, for events like River Fire and New Year's Eve, there are thousands upon thousands of people clamouring for a good vantage point to see the spectacle. It feels like a shared experience of celebration where those watching the fireworks displays can be awed and dazzled together. Is that how it is for you with fireworks? I see some nodding, which is cool. Let's find some fireworks to watch. I wonder if this is how it was for the people of Jerusalem who were drawn to see Jesus that day. Now, of course, there weren't fireworks there, but, but something drew those people to come and see the spectacle of Jesus entering the city, drawn to see the Messiah arriving triumphantly. Maybe the crowds started out small, beginning in ones and twos as the people making their pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the Passover festival realized that something remarkable was taking place. And so they began gathering by the side of the road that led to the eastern gate of the city to watch. And as they did, more people were drawn in, which then drew in more people, and then more people again, all snowballing together until there were crowds of people waving palm branches liberated from the nearest trees and laying down their cloaks in front of the donkey for Jesus to ride over. What do you suppose they were seeing? What were they drawn to see? Our text from Matthew's Gospel gives us a hint. As the author quotes from the Old Testament book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9, where the author writes, Rejoice, O people of Zion! Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem! Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Whether people recognised this connection with their ancient scriptures or not, it must have been a spectacle to behold. Can you imagine it? I'd like you to, to try and picture the scene in your mind's eye. There is Jesus riding on the back of a, con a donkey surrounded by his disciples coming down the road towards the city gates. 
Imagine the sights, the shimmering heat of the day, the dusty road stretching off towards the Mount, to, towards the Mount of Olives, the people lining both sides of the road with more and more people joining the throng, many of them waving palm branches, others laying their coats on the road for Jesus' animals to walk over. Many people follow the procession after Jesus comes past. Now imagine what you can smell, smelling of dust and dirt, of freshly cut branches, of donkey and animal dung, of the odour of, of people jammed together, bumping into one another as they try to get a good vantage point. Then imagine the sounds of people's voices talking excitedly as Jesus approaches, maybe of whispered questions asking if this really is the promised Messiah. The sound of the donkey and the colt steps as their feet strike the compacted surface of the road. Of hearing raised voices as the crowds begin to shout, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. It must have been something to behold. And it seems that the whole city of Jerusalem are drawn in to see it. But apparently this was not the only procession to enter Jerusalem that day. In their book titled The Last Week, a day-by-day -day account of Jesus' final week in Jerusalem, the authors Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan write about another procession that was, was what they surmised was coming into Jerusalem on that same day. Jesus, uh, you see, Jesus' procession entered the city by the eastern gate, while the opposite side of the city via the western gate, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Edom and Judea and Samaria, entered Jerusalem at the head of a column of imperial cavalry and soldiers. The authors Borg and Crossan write that Governor Pilate did not come out of respect for the Jewish Passover festival, which focused on the liberation of the Jewish people from the oppression of an earlier ruthless empire. No, Pilate was there to ensure that the peace was kept during the festival a peace that was brought solely about through the use of force, where the garrison soldiers in Jerusalem were greatly reinforced to ensure that no one would threaten Roman interests. Imagine what this procession was like. The hot sun beating down on the exposed road that came up to Jerusalem from the coastal city of Caesarea Maritima, where Governor Pilate spent most of his time. Imagine the sunlight glinting off gold and steel trim as the soldiers marched along the road. Can you see the imperial eagle lifted high on banners and the stern faces of soldiers who carried them as the crowds lining the roadway looked on at their oppressors? Imagine the smells of dust and dirt disturbed by marching feet and, and chariot wheels, of worn leather armour, of perspiration from soldiers who have marched long and hard, of horses pulling the chariots. Imagine the sounds of the clinking of bridles of the creaking of leather armour, of the swords and shields and spears jostling as the soldiers walked, of the calls of centurions keeping their men in formation, of trotting hooves and marching feet keeping time along the road, of the muted cheers of supporters, of the resentful muttled, muttered complaints of everybody else. The procession of Jesus and the procession of Pilate two very different processions representing opposite beliefs. For Pilate's procession, it was the dominance of empire over every aspect of life. And for Jesus' procession, it was the movement to establish the kingdom of God, a kingdom that stood in opposition to everything that Rome represented. It's telling that the very next verse from the passage quoted from Zechariah in Matthew's passage highlights this opposition. Let's hear these two verses together, beginning with Zechariah verse chapter 9 verse 9 rejoice O people of Zion shout in triumph O people of Jerusalem look your king is coming to you he is righteous and victorious yet he is humble riding on a donkey riding on a donkey's court, uh, colt and then verse 10 he will cut off the chariot from Ephraim the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to the nations his dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Jesus' procession must have been an amazing thing to experience. 
So much so that the author of Matthew reports that the whole city was in turmoil as the people wondered just who this Jesus was. And it wasn't just an idle curiosity either. The ancient Greek word used in Matthew's author is episte, which is being used to describe the shaking due to an earthquake. And so this question as to Jesus' identity must have moved through the city like a seismic wave, causing wonder and alarm amongst the inhabitants as it went, shaking the understanding of God and, and of life to its foundation, all due to Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. And considering what Jesus did immediately after entering the city, that is to clear the temple of the predatory money changers and animal sellers who took advantage of those who were the poorest, and thus upsetting the temple's money stream, some of which went to, went to the Roman Empire, I'm certain that the question as to Jesus' identity would have been discussed at its higher echelons of, Jew, of Jewish authority, so much so that it is believed that this incident caused the Jewish leadership to begin plotting against Jesus, working towards his demise so that his influence would no longer threaten their power and their position and their privilege, would no longer call into question their hypocrisy and their collusion with Rome. And so it is safe to assume that not everyone was accepting of the kingdom that Jesus was establishing, especially those whose business was in war horses and chariots and battle bows and similar items of war, and also those living who was maintained by those items of war. The kingdom of God, when it is fully established, will have no need of these things, for God's kingdom is built on love, love for God and love for one another. As we've been moving through this season of Lent, the seven weeks prior to Easter in which we prepare ourselves for Jesus' death and resurrection, we've been exploring ways in which we can draw closer in our relationship with God, perhaps by giving something up, say a possession or a, or a habit, anything that might distract us from following God, and also by taking on something, such as a practice or an attitude, anything that can strengthen our relationship with God. And so as our Lenten period comes to an end, as we enter into Holy Week, we find this last lesson, a lesson that sets up a conflict between two kingdoms, of God's kingdom and the kingdoms and the empires of this world. It is a lesson that identifies how these two kingdoms operate, peace versus war, kindness versus hostility, inclusion versus exclusion, feast versus famine. Joy versus despair, equity versus privilege, justice versus corruption, care versus neglect, love versus indifference. And so in knowing this, which kingdom are you drawn to? Which kingdom captures your imagination? Which kingdom will you help to choose establish? For as followers of Jesus, we are called to participate with him in the establishing of God's kingdom to work with Jesus to put an end to war and hostility and exclusion and despair and privilege and corruption and neglect and indifference and in their place to bring about peace and kindness, inclusion and joy and equity and justice and care and love. It's not easy to do this though. And at the end of Holy Week, we see what those powers who had vested interest in maintaining the status quo did to, to Jesus, who challenged their empire. Yes, he was put to death on a cross. But we also know he wasn't there for long, for on the third day he was resurrected, establishing once and for all God's kingdom, where we are all reconciled together as God's people, and everyone is invited to become its citizens. In a few moments, we'll have the opportunity to share in a feast, a feast that may not seem like much in quantity, just a small piece of bread and a small cup of grape juice, but a feast in which we will be fed by God's Spirit, a feast where everyone is invited to join and no one is left out, a feast that will give us a foretaste of the banquet that is prepared for everybody when God's kingdom is fully established. A feast which, in which will empower and sustain us to continue working with Jesus in the building of God's kingdom. And so let us keep working with Jesus to do just that, to build God's kingdom here on earth, to help people see the amazing wonder of it all so that they too may be drawn in 
to watch and to participate and to believe. Amen. And so in response, I thought we could sing a song, The King of Glory Comes. So let us stand if we're able and sing. we have received so let us freely give our offering for the Lord
Let's pray. Holy God, we celebrate with your followers as you enter into Jerusalem, as you come to bring us life and peace and health and, and love. And so in, your, in response to your gift of life to us and love to us, we give you these gifts, gifts of money and resources, but we also give you ourselves, our own lives. And so, Lord God, use these gifts and use us in, in working with you to build your kingdom here on earth so that all people may know of your life and love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks, everybody. Please be seated. Notices for noticing. We've got a few coming up. This Wednesday, oh, sorry, this Tuesday at 9.30 a.m., Ladies' Fellowship uh, are meeting here at the church. And uh, Reverend Dr. Geraldine Wheeler will be coming to be with you at Ladies' Fellowship. Geraldine is the artist who paints these pictures that we have that depicts the, the, the seasons of the church as we move through the year. And so, uh, Geraldine, I assume she's coming to share about her work and her art. And, and just be also a lovely presence there too. So if you're able to make it at 9.30 um, on Tuesday um, for Ladies Fellowship, please, please get there. We have Easter services coming up because we are entering into Holy Week. Monday, Thursday, we'll have a service here at 7 p.m. Um, there will be foot, foot washing at, uh, at that service. So if you would like to have your feet washed, um, please uh, wear some shoes which are appropriate so that it'll be easier to take off and put back on. Good Friday service is at 8.30 a.m. this Friday. Uh, an Easter Sunday service will be 8.30 a.m. as well. There won't be an evening service um, for, um, for, uh, on Christmas, oh, sorry, Christmas, on Easter morning, on Easter day, sorry. Um, but if um, we're look, probably looking to uh, have a, maybe a shared dinner that we could uh, all get together on, on Easter, uh, Easter night. So watch this space and we'll make an announcement during the week. There's also a dawn service at 6 a.m. at St. Catherine's Anglican Church. Um, that's at McFarland Street in Middle Park. Um, I'll be going to the dawn service, so if, if you would like to, uh, um, to join in, there will be a, a fire in their Garden of Remembrance um, and a small liturgy there before then moving inside the church where the, the Holy Communion will also be served. So if you would like to uh, be part of that or come along to that, um, 6, 6 a.m. On, uh, on Easter Sunday. On Good Friday, this Friday, after the services, um, um, is the Mugara Passion Play. It runs from 5, at 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, on the shores of Lake Mugara. Details are in Centenary Life, um, but we thought if we would like to carpool or do a bit of a, a procession down here from the church for the day, it's a lovely place to, to be for, uh, um, for picnics and walks. Um, so we'll leave here at 11.30 a.m. But if you'd just like to come down and meet with, with those of us from the church who are going to the Passion Play, um, come on down at around four o'clock um, and you get to park there at, um, at Lake Mugara and join us um, and give us a call. You, my number's in Centenary Life. Give me a call if, you're, if you've lost and you'd like to connect up with us. Um, but you, need to do, you do need to book. There are tickets and they're free tickets, um, but on the, uh, you reserve your free tickets on the website. So if you could um, log in that way, uh, well, log on to their website and then uh, claim your tickets there and, and bring a, an image of, the, of the, uh, the ticket, that would be great. Many members of the congregation will remember Christine Henderson. Sadly, Christine's brother passed away last week, having been unwell for some time. There will be a service celebrating John, her brother's life, and it will be held at Logan Home tomorrow at 10 a.m., and the details are in Centenary Life. All members of the congregation are welcome to attend. Christine has particularly asked for us to pray for her and her family during this time, at, during the service tomorrow. Also, um, you, some of you may know a Helen Kidd of Indrapilly Uniting Church. Um, sadly, Helen passed away last week. Um, there will be a service to, uh, to celebrate her life and to, to mourn with the family as well at 10.30 a.m. on Wednesday morning at Indrapilly Uniting Church. And again, all are welcome to, to attend. I think that's all our notices for today. And so, um, oh, David, are you leading us in our prayer for others? Thank you. We join together in prayer. Let us pray. 
Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Crowds cheered when you came to Jerusalem. You came to bring peace, but the civil authorities did not welcome you. Jesus, we pray for your world, for peace that brings an end to violence, oppression and war, for peace that enables all people to live with dignity and justice, for world leaders and for all who commit their lives to the work of peace. Jesus, son of David, let us follow in your way. Crowds cheered when you came to Jerusalem. You came to bring the freedom of the spirit, but the chief priests plotted your death. Jesus, we pray for your church, for a church freed from false dogma and legalism, discord and division, for a pilgrim church ready to travel where you lead, for all leaders of your church and for those who minister in your name. Jesus, son of David, let us follow in your way. Crowds cheered when you came to Jerusalem. You came to bring love, but you were betrayed and deserted by your friends. Jesus, we pray for this community, for our families, our friends, for those with whom we work and learn, for the hungry, the homeless, and those without hope for the future, for all who live in fear or despair, and all who know the pain of betrayal. Jesus, son of David, let us follow in your way. Crowds cheered when you came to Jerusalem. You came to bring healing to the sick and release to the captive, but you were beaten, imprisoned and killed. Jesus, we pray for all in need, for prisoners of conscience and those held without trial, for all whose beliefs lead them to frightening and lonely places, for the friendless, the unwanted, and all from whom we turn away, for the sick and all who mourn. And so this morning we especially remember our dear friend Chrissy and her family as they mourn the loss of a brother and a son. May they know the gift of your love and peace. Jesus, son of David, let us follow in your way. Crowds cheered when you came to Jerusalem. You travelled towards the cross, but Jerusalem was also the place of the empty tomb. We give you thanks for faithful people throughout the ages who have followed you on this journey. Jesus, let us suffer and die with you that we may rise to fullness of life with you. Jesus, son of David, let us follow in your way. Amen. And so we are gathered around the table. And so let us stand and sing. Here is bread, here is wine. I invite the elders to come forward.
Come all who listen for hope. For our Lord invites you to his table. Here is a place where you are welcome. We come to this table knowing our need, nourishment in faith. Be present, risen Lord Jesus, as you were with your disciples, and make yourself known to us in the breaking of the bread. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, ever and ever. Amen. Hear the words of institution of this sacrament as recorded by the Apostle Paul. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. For as often as you drink this bread and for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so according to our Saviour's command, we set this bread and this cup apart for the holy supper to which he calls us. And we come to God with our prayers of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Thanks and praise, glory and honour are rightly yours, our Lord and God, for you alone are worthy. In time beyond our dreaming, you brought forth life out of darkness. And in the love of Christ, your Son, you set humanity at the heart of your creation. And so we praise you with the faithful of every time and place, joining with choirs of angels and the whole creation in the eternal hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, and blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you that you called a covenant people to be a light to the nations. Through Moses, you taught us to love your law, and in the prophets, you cried out for justice. In the fullness of your mercy, you became one with us in Jesus Christ, who gave himself up for us on the cross. You make us alive together with him, that we may rejoice in his presence and share his peace. By water and the Spirit, you open the kingdom to all who believe and welcome us to your table. For by grace, we are saved through faith. With this bread and this cup, we do as our Saviour commands. We celebrate the redemption he has won for us. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out the Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Make us one with him, one with each other, and one in ministry in the world until at last we feast with him in the kingdom. Amen. And let us continue in prayer with the words Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup we take is sharing in the blood of Christ. The gifts, the gifts of, God of God for the people of God. Jesus, Lamb of God, have, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, Grant us your peace. Receive this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. As we've started to do again, we are serving at the front of the church. So when you are ready, 
Everybody is welcome to come forward and to, uh, to approach a server and, and they will, you will receive a piece of bread and then the next will you receive a small cup. And feel free to consume that when you are ready. So come for all is prepared.
blood of Christ. Let us pray. Holy God, you have fed us out of, all, out of your own generous and gracious hands. From them we have received welcome, nourishment, hope and consolation. May these things grow in us alongside the gift of faith so that we may plant their seed in the world around us. Through the Holy Spirit, guide us in the week ahead to remember our place in your great and ongoing story of resurrection, redemption and restoration. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so, let us stand once again. I oh, know there's a benediction. No, we don't have a. Well, actually, let us stand for the benediction. That's right. We should do that. No. <laughs> let's stand for the benediction. We don't have a song. That's yeah. right. <laughs> this is a vision of the way it can be the way it should be. Shouts of welcome, a joyful procession, a community celebrating together. The same vision is offered to us today. We can welcome Christ into our lives. We can celebrate his transforming power. How swiftly things changed back then. How swiftly we too can be distracted. May we hold fast to his vision of goodness, peace, peace from the practice of justice and equality from the practice of respect. As this week unfolds, we will let ourselves be overtaken by God's love. We will pour it back out into the world. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. And so let us turn to one another as we share the Mispa benediction. May the Lord watch between me and thee, whilst we're absent, one from the other. Amen. Let's sing.